Consider the following beautiful sunset. Sure, the colors are spectacular and the ocean foreground is a pretty tasty aesthetic morsel as well, but a huge part of what makes the sunset so captivating is the brevity of its display, the impermanence it embodies, and the knowledge that it is inevitably going to disappear from the horizon, leaving behind a cold, dark, and colorless sky. To quote the great poet Robert Frost, nothing gold can stay. Or can it? Zeno would say, how do we really know that the sun is actually going to go down? Consider the following argument. In order for the sun to move from its current position in the sky to a position below the horizon, it must first move halfway between the two points. But in order for it to move to that halfway point, it must first move a quarter of the way between its current position and the position below the horizon. And in order for it to move to that quarter way point, it must first move an eighth of the way between its current position and the position below the horizon. This pattern goes on infinitum, leaving us with a completely deductively sound argument that the sun will never go down in a world where the sun absolutely, definitely, and without any reasonable doubt goes down every day. Yikes! Another famous one, Sorority's Paradox, asks questions like how many grains of sand constitutes a heap? I mean, we all know a heap when we see it, but as soon as we try to define a heap, we run into a similar problem as the one with the sunset. I mean, maybe we land on a number like a thousand grains of sand. So not 999, 998, 997, 996, and so on. Consider the following model ship construction for another example of Sorority's Paradox. We have a ship and we have no doubt that it is currently a ship. Is it still a ship if we take away one of the planks? Probably. What about the steering wheel? Eh, yeah, it's still a ship. The mast? The entire deck? At what point is a ship no longer a ship? And if you think that all these paradoxes are just goofy thought experiments, you would be wrong. It turns out that all of this is very relevant in socio-political matters as well. The abortion debate has been a heated topic for decades, and at the core of it exists one of the most complex and important sorties paradoxes of our era. When does life begin? At the moment of conception? Probably not. The development of a concrete human form? Yeah, somewhere in there, but when? Animal rights activists place a lot of emphasis on the notion of speciesism and the importance of equal consideration of interests of beings that are not human, but what actually counts as an interest worth considering. The interest in not suffering, the activists would say, is a pretty big one. I think many of us would agree with that, but how do we apply such a mandate universally? Do we want to classify different animal species based on their capacity for suffering? Should we count the interests of a cow and a housefly equally? What about clams and mussels? They don't have a central nervous system. Where do they fit into the picture? What about trees? They don't have a central nervous system either, but they clearly have interest in growing large and strong, living long lives. These paradoxes are everywhere. So next time you get caught in a heated debate about the number of licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop, or are soaking in the beauty of a spectacular sunset, pause to marvel at this paradoxical world we live in and all the mystery that it brings.